Hi, Eric Gibo, ericgibo.com, and today I'm going to present you this lens by TT Artisan, the 56mm 1.8. I tested it on my Fujifilm XS20, but it also exists for Sony E mounts, for APS C, and also Nikon Z. So let's start. I remind you that I presented the 35mm 1.8. They are so similar, they look really the same. Uh, this one is a bit lighter, 35 mm I think, maybe slightly lighter, but the size, the build, same quality. I would say that uh, this one was prone to flare, and uh, this is highly corrected on this one. You still have some flare, but nothing, not as much as this, okay? But they really look similar, so I'll leave you a link of uh, the review I made of the 35 mm The build is completely metal. One thing uh, that is important is the back cap. Don't lose it. There is a USB-C connector here, so you can update the firmware. I think I love the solution that TT Artisan is having, is using. Uh, because you don't have to buy an extra dock or whatever some a uh, lot more expensive brand actually uh, sell you a separate dock to update the firmware i think this is the best situ best way you know you have connectors here usb-c and that's it you know great okay fully metal you don't have aperture ring on this one i know that fujifilm fan love uh, aperture rings for me that's no problem okay and here you will have uh, here you have a ring that is the focusing ring when you're not using uh, autofocus. You prefer to have a manual focus. It's smooth, works really nice. The only point I don't really like uh, this is the sun hood. It's really uh, it works really nice, really good. Uh, the shape I don't like this shape, but I understand you need it to uh, uh, keep flare away and uh, keep some contrast contrast on your lens, uh, on your picture. But the problem is uh, the front cap. When you have it, uh, then when you're going to put it in your bag, you can still put the, uh, the, lens, the, the hood on there, but then you cannot remove the cap. So uh, when you're walking on the street, if you have this on, it's really, uh, you will end up not using the, the cap. Well, I would have preferred if that created a square, a rectangle a cap for that, and that's it. I don't know, okay? but. Honestly, the build is really great, really good. Uh, nice in hand, weight, all this, really nice. So this is a 56 millimeter. The equivalent in full frame is 84 millimeter. The angle that covers is 28 degrees. And as I said, is APS-C autofocus uh, lens with a Fuji X mount, Sony E, APS-C uh, version, okay? And Nikon Z also uh, for APS-C. So you have three uh, Mount, possible mounts okay the aperture goes from 1.8 to f16 the minimum focusing distance is five uh, 50 centimeters half a meter okay i think that's nice i like to be able to uh, be uh, close i would like always closer but that's fine and uh, that, that's okay if you look at the aperture it has no, uh, nine blades and I must say that the bokeh on uh, point of light at maximum aperture is really round, really nice. I think it's smooth. I like the bokeh it gives, really nice. The build is 10 elements in nine groups and the weight 233 grams up to 245 grams, depending, I suppose, on the mount or if there's a sunshade or I don't know. Okay, but that's around this, okay? And the filter size, the diameter, is the same as on the 35 millimeter, which is 52 millimeters. The build, completely metal, really nice. When we speak about 58, uh, 56 millimeters, straight away in APS-C, people think about a portrait lens. Yes, probably, but I wanted to try it in many situations because uh, sometimes some people like it for other things. So uh, you will see the pictures. And I think, yeah, it's not just portrait, it's for many things. One thing, the way it looks is nice, the metal is nice, but what's important is the optical quality. So we're going to have a look at it and a look at the uh, target and show you and comment. So let's have, let's see that. So let's check. F1.8, center, 100%. That's not bad, that's not fantastic, but that's not bad. Side borders yeah not too yeah that's acceptable but it's not really really exceptional uh, just acceptable okay center is fine uh, for that aperture 2.0 which is one third of a stop closer center starts to be fine oh by the way here let's check a uh, vignetting 
uh, maybe a slight distortion, really slight. I'm not even sure. No, I don't think so. And uh, vignetting, yes, there's a bit of vignetting, okay, at 1.8. F2, center is good, okay. I think there's a bit of chromatic aberration here. We can see some violet uh, fringing, okay. Corners is not really sharp. It's not dramatic, but it's not really sharp. And uh, I do see... Uh, uh, yeah, some uh, it's not completely sharp. Okay, two point eight center is good. Border is fine. Corner is not exceptional. Okay, uh, but center is fine. If we look at five points, uh, sorry, uh, F four now F four. Yeah, yes, F four. Center is really good, okay. Corners, well, it's not exceptional. Borders, yeah, it's a bit better. Uh, vignetting is gone, okay, by now. 5.6. Center is really good. I'm always check on 100%. Let's check 200%, but uh, normally you check always on 100%, okay. As you can see, it's really, uh, really okay. Corners, they're fine, but they never get too exceptional, okay? Uh, 100%, okay. Uh, F8 is a bit darker because I was uh, with indirect uh, natural light and the cloud came by, so this is why a bit darker, okay? Uh, let's see the center. Center is okay. I think... Uh, this fraction still center. We see in the corner. Okay. Let's see F11. We do see uh, the drop in sharpness due to uh, this fraction. Corners. Let's see. Same thing. Okay. F16. Obviously, it would be the same thing. Or oh, a bit even worse. Yeah. Drop in sharpness. Obviously, that's normal. Okay. So I would say the perfect, uh, the best. Uh, Aperture for this lens is uh, 5.6. Uh, if we look at here, yeah, uh, center. The corner never get really incredibly sharp. Okay, obviously they find completely usable, and uh, for that price tag, that's fine. But uh, I think this lens is really a sweet spot. Is on 5.6. If we look at the autofocus, it is really fast. It works nice. No problem. Let's speak about the sharpness. Well, in the center, yeah, sharpness is there. On the border, you never, in the corner, you never get maximum sharpness. Is it a problem? Well, it all depends on the kind of picture you want to make. If you make portrait and, uh, or picture where you have a subject, uh, whether a person or any subject, which is in the center or in the thirds, that will be no problem because uh, this part with less sharpness will be in the out of focus part of your picture anyway, so you won't notice it. But if you wanted to use this lens for uh, maybe a painting reproduction, maybe that's not the lens for that because you need uh, maximum sharpness from corner to corner, border to border. So I would not use this lens for that. But for the rest, that, that's okay. If we look at uh, the contrast, yes, nice contrast. Contrast, it is a bit punchy, that's fine. Vignetting, yes, there is some vignetting up to 2.8 at f4 it disappears, but there is never uh, that much vignetting that you cannot remove it in post production anyway. And for many people who make portrait, they actually like this vignetting, so no problem. The bokeh is smooth, I think it's fine. Uh, I like it, uh, it's a matter of taste. Uh, don't mix up bokeh with uh, depth of field. Okay, I speak about the the autofocus part, the way it looks, I think it looks nice, okay? There is a bit of cr uh, chromatic aberration, uh, that is not a problem for me, for what I did and kind of picture I do, but same thing, if you wanted to use this lens for uh, painting reproduction or that kind of uh, art reproduction, that could be a problem, so probably not the lens for that either. If you look at the flare, it is a lot more controlled than on the 35 millimeter, but it's still present and I think it's nice because many portrait photographers, they like to have a bit of flare. When you get uh, really close to the lens, the source of light really close to the lens like this, it's really washed and uh, I like it. So if you want to do that kind of romantic picture, uh, a bit uh, dreamy, you will like it. 
if you don't want any flare at all, that's not the lens, okay? But uh, or, or you have to orientate your light in a different way, okay? But still, I think what I saw was fine, okay? Actually, I think it's hard to get a lot better for this price. It's under 200 euros, and uh, you would have to spend probably uh, five or six times more, okay? So for that price, for that build, I think there is not much we can complain about. So my conclusion, well, I think this is a great little lens, nice build, the image quality, the optical quality is good. It's not the best you can find, I think, but you would have to pay a lot more to get better than this. So for me, that's nice. But what I really love is that uh, the market is changing. Uh, we're going back to uh, real photography. Lately, people were looking only at the optical side of a lens and they forgot to look at photography. And I love that there is these alternative lenses because uh, now, you, and for that budget, obviously not really a top price, but now it means that you could have two or three uh, lenses of the same focal length. And depending on what you want to do, you will use one or another. If I would use for a, a painting reproduction, I would probably not use that. If I would use uh, one for portrait, maybe I would use this one. If I need portrait with no flare, maybe I would not use this one. It all depends, okay? But it means you have several options. So for me, this lens, uh, if you like, I, I've shown you some pictures during the, the review, but I put all the pictures at the end, okay? Uh, if you like that kind of aspect, yeah, I can recommend it to you. You will like it. If you don't like this aspect, obviously this lens is not for you. So the decision is yours. But for me, this is a great little lens for a fair price for what it gives. Okay, so for me, it's completely recommendable. In case you're interested, I'll leave you a link in the description on where you can buy it. So thank you so much, TT Artisan, for sending me the lens. Thank you so much to you for watching the video. If you feel it may interest other people, please share it on social networks. If you have not done it yet, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. There's a small button down here and there's a small bell. If you click on the bell, get, you get notified when I upload a new video. My website, ericgibo.com. If you have any question, can leave a comment below. I'll also leave you links of my gear on Amazon, links of everything I reviewed by KF Concepts and Mark and uh, flashes by Westcott more affiliated links and also a link to my PayPal account in case you wanted to make a donation. Thank you so much. I'll leave you with the pictures I made with the lens and see you soon. Bye.